Oh my gosh, you guys blew my mind again. Here we are, less than 24 hours I'm recording this ago, I, I posted a video how to access the uh, best free Forex indicator, this journey we're on together. And um, your guys' outpouring of support again was insane. You hit the 200 like goal. And I think that um, if that's all I ask, then this is a good thing. So we're going to keep it rolling. So here's the message before we get started. In order for me to drop the next video after this, which the video after this will be the strategy behind the indicator. This one is all about settings and adjustments. The next video is going to be about the actual strategy. What is making the indicator call a trade? I'm going to teach you the manual strategy so you know how to do it, which is thousands of dollars worth of value in one video for free but you've got to hit 200 likes on this video. If you guys can do that for me, I'll post that next video. So with that said, guys, I want to say thank you for this. Today's video is uh, all about creating settings, changing settings, learning how to do that, kind of navigating that, in, um, that process. And it's going to help you guys to kind of mess with things, see things differently and start to back test. In a future video, I'm going to really talk about the back testing process and what I look for because the back testing process uh, just right out of the box doesn't make much sense because of the contract value and the risk percentage the settings don't work so it makes the profitability get skewed when you back test it the point is today's video is all about the settings so let's get over to the computer and start talking about these settings today okay so now that we're at the computer we've got a, a chart up hopefully you guys are already up to speed on this first and foremost two things Number one, I've created a playlist. I'll drop it right here up top. If you're on a desktop, you can see it pop up on the top corner there. A playlist of every video pertaining to this. So you guys can subscribe to that playlist. You can watch that playlist so you don't miss anything. Second of all, if for whatever reason, you're popping your head in. You're like, what is going on? He's getting all these likes. We are basically, I'm giving out this indicator for free and I'm having people help me develop it and find better adjustments and we're a big army together. Hundreds and hundreds of people already have access to this indicator, which is super exciting. So with that said, if you need to know how to access it, I have an entire video on that in that playlist, as well as um, if you go to the description here, I've got the links available to, to get access. You have to request access. Keep in mind, it's a manual access. So it takes me a day or two to get you access, but you will get access. There's plenty of people, by the way, in the comments section for me, so that everybody else that's brand new, comment down below something about the indicator if you have access. I got access and this is the best thing I saw so far. So what I want you to do in the comment section, comment down below, let's get to 100 comments. I've got the indicator dash and share one thing that you like about it so far. It could be, I like that it's free. It could be, I don't know what I like yet. It could be, I like the simplicity. I don't care what your answer is. It could be, it sucks. Doesn't bother me at, the, at all, period. Just go down there and do that for me so that the rest of the people can see all the people that have it and get in the army. So with that said, let's discuss today's settings. So in the previous video on how to access, I talked about this just briefly, but today we're gonna to talk about it. So step one precursor, you've gotta have your strategy up on your screen. Again, go to indicators, go to invite only scripts. And if you've been added, it'll show up under the Patrick Asian session script. Now that you've got it up, Obviously, you're gonna to have to follow the settings from the previous, but to recap the settings from the previous, once you put it on, a few things need to happen. Number one, you gotta move stop loss buffer to zero, period. You gotta do it. That has to happen. That's There's no negotiation. It won't work without it, period. So you gotta move that to zero. Nothing else here needs to change. Um, and then under style, I changed plot to this color here. So there's been you know, a few different things gone on there. So here's what I changed the plots there. I actually turned off Asia, London for today. It just helps me see it. You don't have to have them on. Um, you know, I, I was getting some people asking me a question last night. Hey, what are the process now? So when an alert comes, what do I look for? And I'm like, I don't think you understand. We're not trying to look for anything. What part of, we're trying to make a trading indicator that you don't have to know shit about trading, do you not understand? That's the goal is it sets an alert, it says buy, and you buy. Now, obviously, the better we get at understanding the strategy behind it, the better results we'll get. And somebody's gonna come in here and say, no, don't buy. 
wait until this happens, then buy, and I've increased the win rate. That's the goal of this series. So once you have it set up, we go back to settings, and that's what today's video is about. It's all about this front page. Now, next video, once this video gets 200 likes, I'm gonna teach the strategy behind the indicator. But before I do that, I'm gonna give you a brief synopsis of the strategy. The strategy involves location of EMAs, it involves location of RSI, and it involves trend in Asian range. Those are the three metrics. Somebody said in the comment section, I see what you're doing. This is based off the TDI. No, it's not, it has literally nothing. You go into all, all the lines of code, TDI is not mentioned once. It's not based off the TDI. It's based off RSI, EMAs, and London session, or I'm sorry, Asian session range trend. Now today we're gonna to talk about the basic settings that you guys can change here. So as I change these, you'll notice these boxes will change too. So I'm gonna pop this back up. You can come and follow along if you want. I'm on pound Swiss, GBP CHF, 15 minute chart here. Uh, day of recording is August 18th, Friday, August 18th. So you can go back and look at this on your indicator. Now, here's where the challenge is for us as a group. You didn't pay for this indicator. All I said is let's make the best indicator in the world and we can impact people's lives. So how do we do that? Well, out the box, it's having some success. Plenty of you guys have already messaged me like, dude, it's a lot better than I thought it would be for a free indicator. And I'm, I'm elated about that. I've spent, I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars and hours and hours and hours to get this where it is with our developers. But it's not to where we want it to be. We, want, we always can make it better. So today you're now learning about changing the settings. So check this out. We'll start at the bottom. The RSI is very simple. You've got the RSI length, which you can see the RSI is down here, by the way. One thing that I want to mention is that if you change the settings here on the RSI, you need to change them here. For instance, if I change this to 15 and hit OK, this RSI doesn't change. So I would need to then come down here and change this to 15. So for the RSI one, that will uh, change. Now keep in mind that won't ever change a result. The RSI length won't change really a result, but I just want a quick disclaimer. You need to change the RSI in line with that. You don't need to touch the EMAs uh, or, or redo the EMAs. So change that back to 14. Here's where we start to change. Let me ask you guys your first question. Are you a more aggressive trader or more conservative? Or do you like how it is now in terms of the amount of trades that it sends? Based off that answer, you're gonna change some settings down here. Okay, and you're also gonna see what kind of results it's giving you. So let's say you're more of an aggressive trader. If you're more of an aggressive trader and you want more trades, you drop the RSI level and you increase the RSI over sold level. So you drop the RSI over bot to say 60 and you'd increase this one to 40. And when you do that, that will increase the amount of trades that it alerts, okay, it will just diminish accuracy. That's all it'll do. But what your goal is to start messing with these settings and finding the perfect combination. On the flip side, if you want a more conservative approach, less trades, more pinpoint accuracy, higher accuracy, higher win rate, you're going to increase that setting. Do you notice how we have a trade that happened today on GBP CHF and it just went away? Well, if I go back to our standard settings of 7030 and hit okay, look what happens, it shows back up. That's because the RSI did not go over bot on 80. You can see the 80 number, let me blow this up. This right here, here I'll just tap that and change the number here for you. That right there is 80. Today it did not hit 80, you see that? It only hit 70, which is where our standard indicator settings are. And so it filtered that trade out. So again, that's the first major setting. That one's easy. That one's all day long. You can decide if you're gonna be more aggressive or less aggressive. How many trades do you want? If you say, Patrick, I want as many trades as possible, then lower it to either, um, uh, it, it's, there's no one size fits all, but I would say you would lower this maximum to 60 and move this maximum up to 40. I would not go any more extreme than that. If you want to be in the middle, do 65, 35, something like that. And of course, there's nothing stopping you from moving this 
up to 71 and that to 29. Like you can move it by one, you can move it by two. Again, that's up to you. So that's the first setting. The second setting is the EMA length. This is where it's gonna get interesting. Oh yeah. Because somebody in here is like, I always enter when the seven EMA crosses the 22 or some weird combination. You're who I'm looking for. Another person in here is like, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna test numbers. When you change these EMAs, it'll change entries, it'll change if it enters, it'll change all sorts of things. So imagine I change this to seven and this to 21. Just as an example, notice it, start, it, it just put out a trade that didn't exist before there. Right here, it just didn't hit TP yet. This again could be down instead of five and 13, maybe four and 10. Now, if that's the case, it entered a little bit quicker. It already hit target even sooner. This one hit break even, right? So your goal is to start messing with these EMAs. Now, as a, as a uh, reminder for you guys, or a note taking moment, EMA number one and EMA number two are all around entry. The higher the numbers you go, the later they will enter. The lower the numbers you go, for instance, if I went to two and seven, the sooner it'll enter, okay? But if I go again back up to say 15 and 30, it changes things, doesn't it? It didn't even hit TP because it was a slower entry, which gave it a worse entry, which gave it a wider stop and a higher take profit. Because again, it's not targeting structure. The take profit is based off a one to two risk road ratio. Okay, which we'll get there in a minute again. So these are standard at 513, but you're gonna to start to mess with those. Now the second set of EMAs are three, four, and five. This is all based off trend. We utilize these EMAs to sort of articulate our trend. Are we in an uptrend or downtrend or are we, are we uh, sideways market? If we're sideways market, the, the um, indicator will not send a trade alert. If we're up upside market, bullish market, it will only look to buy. And if we're in a downside market, it will only look to sell. It's a trend trading strategy, which is why generally it has success. Coupled with a one to two risk to ratio, you can start to see why I love this so much. So you're gonna to wanna to start to mess with those. And what your goal is, is to mess with settings and back test and look back. How many won on this setting? How many won on this setting? How many won on this setting? And then come back to the group in the YouTube comments or in groups or wherever it is and say, hey, guess what? I found the setting. Check out EMA one at this number, EMA two, this number, EMA three, EMA four, EMA five. You're starting to customize it. This is your indicator now, okay? So that's the second step. Now the third step, of course, you have to leave that at zero. That doesn't change. Do not move that. It won't change result. Um, in the future iterations, we might we might advance this to like V3. Right now we're on V2 and um, allow for some different stop loss movement. But right now I don't want anybody to be able to move stops. I want everybody to have the same stop and they can only mess with RSI, EMA, and targeting levels. So let's now talk about targeting. Targeting is a couple different things. Number one, you can turn off move to break even. And what that does is that changes the way you move your stop loss. So right now how it sits, it's got this gray box and you guys can see that. When the market hits the top of the gray box or if it's selling the bottom of the gray box, it automatically moves the stop loss level to the entry level, taking away risk, putting it to break even. You can see that here because you had a stop loss here. And then look at the same time price hit the top of the gray, the stop loss moved up. That's because it moved to entry. And that's a visual representation of that with our indicator. So the first setting you can turn off is that. Now, if you want to leave it on, the second setting you can change is when do you move it to break even? Maybe you want to move it at later at 1.5. So that makes the gray way later. That lets the trade breathe longer. Or maybe you're like, man, all I care about is getting in the trade moving to break even as soon as possible. In fact, I want to get to break even in half the time as the standard out the box setting. Well, the standard out the box setting is one. So I would change that to 0.5. And in doing so, 
the gray moved down halfway. In this case, look what happened. Look what happened. It hit break even, then it stopped at break even. So this was a winner on standard out the box settings, but because I just changed the setting, it now became a break even trade. Okay. On a flip side of that, down here, this one was a loser on standard out the box settings, and now it's a break even trade. So you're always gonna have to kind of roll up the punches. You can't have your cake and eat it too, as I always say. So remember that you never want to design a setting based off one trade. You want to design a setting based off every single chart. And that's what TradingView doesn't do very well. You can't just click a button to backtest the entire market. Because one, one chart, pound Swiss might be a profit factor of three and have a 70% win rate, but then Eurowazi is 30%. Well, you can't then go and change the settings for Eurowazi and then change the settings for pound Swiss you're not trying to have 50 different bots. We're trying to have one bot with the highest potential win rate. And that's what we're talking about now. So that every chart you go in with those settings, you look and you say, wow, I'm starting to see some good results. It's starting to look better. Okay. So with that said, opening this back up, I'm going to change that back to one. The next thing you could do is you could change the risk reward ratio. Now, of course, the higher you move your risk reward ratio, the less amount of trades you have to win, but also the less accurate the machine's gonna be. The lower you move the risk reward ratio, you're gonna win more trades guaranteed, but your, and your win rate's gonna be higher, but you have to win more trades to make money. The whole premise behind a one to two risk reward ratio, which is what we have standard out the box settings, is your goal is to win hopefully 50% of your trades, but with a one to two risk reward ratio, you can lose more than you win and still make money. So let's say I change this to one. If I change that to one, every percent I risk, okay? Every percent I risk, I have a reward. So if I risk 2%, I reward 2%. So you can see in this example, once I went to one to one, this is now a winner, still a winner, and this is now a winner. So on out the box settings, this was a loser with a 0.5 break even, it was a break even trade. With a, a one to one, it's a winner. Here's another one, winner. One to one uh, results in a lot of winners. No question, your, your win rate will increase. And we'll talk about those sort of backtesting setups later down the line. But that's another setting you're going to want to look at. And you can start to mess with that. In fact, someone, and you're going to know who you are because you sent it to my phone. Somebody started changing this to 0.35 and then this to 2.5. And they had, on, on, on long-term backtesting, phenomenal results. I'm just kind of giving you an example about how crazy you can get with the settings. This example doesn't show very well because it's it doesn't change the results here in either side. But... Hopefully, this all helps you guys kind of understand the difference in the settings. So my goal is for you guys to now start messing with the settings, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, playing with it, enjoying it, having fun with it. What I don't want you guys to do, though, is get frustrated. Um, because as you mess with settings, granted, some days are going to be exciting because you're going to have more winners and you're like, I'm finding it. Another day, it'll have way more losers. This is something that is... As it says, it's probably the best free indicator on the market. I'm going to be honest. I, I already, it's it's um, frankly, I've seen stuff that people charge money for, and it's nowhere near this. So, um, for that reason, you guys need to get this video to 200 likes for me to undo or unlock the next video, which will be the actual strategy behind the uh, the setups to teach you guys why it's calling a trade. But uh, with that said, again, I'm going to go over here to my my webcam. I just want to say one more time how um, humbled I am by the support. You guys are an army. You guys are commenting. You guys are clicking like. You're hitting subscribe. I I've gained like 100 subscribers. Um, one of my things on my vision board is 100,000 YouTube subscribers. And, and I sat down with myself recently and I was like, it's not growing. It hasn't been growing for months. How do I grow a channel? You give so much damn value, it's insane and more and more people will find it. So please, if you can, share with your friends and family, share with your trading colleagues, let them know, dude, what Patrick's doing right now is crazy. Check out his YouTube, go to that playlist, send him a link to the video, whatever you gotta do, 
to help me. My dream is 100,000 subscribers. Your dream is making money in the markets. Together, we could have a great little relationship here if we keep working together. So with that said, guys, I appreciate you all so much. Don't forget to get this video to 200 likes. Check out the playlist, and we'll see you on the next video.